Hello, class. In this video, we're going to be covering 4.1, which is rational functions and asymptotes. And so we're going to go ahead and go through the packet for this particular section. So the first thing we have is the introduction to a rational function. Now, we do know that rational expressions are defined as the quotient of two polynomial expressions. And so then it follows that a rational function is a quotient of two polynomial functions, okay? Um, and this is just the polynomial for the numerator, and then this is the polynomial for the denominator, and everything is in terms of x, okay? Um, the domain of a rational function of x it includes all real numbers except any of the x values that make the denominator zero, okay? So much of the discussion of rational functions will focus on their graphical behavior near those specific x values, okay? So for example, we have the function f of x equal to one over x. And if we talk about the behavior that happens near um, the excluded x value, with your, if you take your denominator and you equal it to zero, in this case, you just get x equal to zero. So your domain in this case would be um, all real numbers except zero, okay? But what we wanna know is what is happening around zero then? I get that the function is not defined at zero, right? But what's happening, happening really close to zero on the left and what's happening really close to zero on the right? And so what they've done here is they've created a number line. And if you have zero here, the next integer there is negative one and the next integer on this side is a positive one. And so what they've done is they've gotten pretty close to zero by using negative 1.5. And then to get even closer, you can do negative 0.1 to get even closer, you can get negative 0 0.01. And if you wanna get real close, I mean, you could still keep getting closer, but you go to 0 0.001 on the left-hand side. And so you're almost like right on top of that mark where the zero is, okay? You're not quite there, but you're almost there. And so then if you do f of x, in this case, it's one over negative one, which turns out to be negative one. In this case, it's one over negative 0 0.5, which in this case equals negative two. Here you have one over negative 0 0.1, which actually equals negative 10, and so on and so forth, right? And then eventually negative one over, or one over this expression gives you a thousand, okay? So we can see that as we get closer and closer to that x value zero, the y values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction, meaning that they will ultimately go toward negative infinity, just like my x values were going toward zero, okay? Now, similarly, I could do it the other way around. I could pick a number in the middle here, or I could pick one, and then I could pick a number in the middle like 0.5, and then I could pick a num number like 0.1, I could pick a number closer, like 0 0.01, and then a number even closer, 0 0.001, okay? So I'm going in this direction, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and then 0 0.001. Now, if I plug those into the same expression, you get 1 over 1, which is 1, 1 over 2, uh, or I'm sorry, 1 over 0 0.5, which is 2. Um, 1 over 0 0.1, which is 10, 1 over 0 0.01, which is 100, and then 1 over 0 0.001, which actually equals 1,000. So again, as I'm coming from the right now, you have this y value. Then as you get closer, you have this y value. As you get closer, you have this y value. And as you keep getting closer and closer, notice what's happening to those y's values. Um, the numbers are getting closer and closer approaching that zero, but the y values are getting bigger and bigger in the positive direction, which means they're approaching positive infinity, okay? 
And so essentially what's happening is that to the left of zero, the graph is going downward forever. And then to the right of zero, the graph is going up forever. And so if you were to use a graphing calculator, for instance, this is what you would end up with. If you just plot those points that you had, um, when you plugged in negative one, you got negative one. When you plugged in 0.5, um, you got two, which was down here. When you plugged in 0.1, it was another point down here. When you plugged in 0.01, it's like way down there, right? But you can see that that's exactly where this graph is going, okay? It's gonna go down that direction. It's never gonna actually cross this line, so my drawing's a little bit off, but you will not have a Y value when X is zero. So you will never touch the Y axis ever, okay? Same thing here, when I plugged in positive one, I got one. When I plugged in 0.5, I got two. When I plugged in 0.1, I got 10, which is like way up there somewhere. And you can see the same thing is happening over here. It's just going upward and it's getting closer and closer to that y-axis, but it's never touching the y-axis, okay? Um, so now we kind of have the idea of what's happening when you get closer to that x value zero. Now, um, what is happening is that there is essentially what we define or what we call a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. This y-axis, I told you, it will never touch the y-axis. It'll get real, real close all the way down there and it'll get real, real close all the way up there, but it never actually touches or crosses the y-axis, okay? And so that invisible line, the y-axis, it's just an invisible line. That invisible line is called your vertical asymptote. So it's a vertical line that you never touch or cross, okay? Um, there is something else, if you notice in the graph, um, there is also what we call a horizontal asymptote. So that one I'm going to put in green just so that it can stand out a little bit. But notice that the graph also never touches. It'll get real close over here on the right. It'll get real close over here on the left. But it never actually touches the x-axis, OK? That is called a horizontal asymptote because the line there, this imaginary line that never gets touched or crossed, um, that imaginary line is a horizontal line. So this one is called the horizontal asymptote. Now, you have to be very careful because there is a difference, not only just the direction of the line, right, vertical versus horizontal, but also one rule to remember is that you can never cross or touch a vertical asymptote. However, you can cross and touch a horizontal asymptote. Essentially, what a horizontal asymptote is, is basically where the y values are going on the ends, okay? So there could be some crossing and touching in the middle, but to the ends, it's where the y values are going. So notice that these y values are getting closer and closer to zero on the right end, and then these y values are getting closer and closer to zero on the left-hand end, okay? So down here, they're just kind of making that definition. It's saying, notice that the Y value is going to zero as X goes to the left, and the Y value is going to zero as X goes to the right. So here are the basic definitions of those guys. Let me get the little camera to go away on my screen. Okay, there we go. Um, so, X equal to a number, it's called the vertical asymptote when the Y value goes to infinity or negative infinity from the left or from the right or both, okay? A horizontal line, Y equals a number, is a horizontal asymptote when the Y values approach that number as the X values either go all the way to positive infinity on the right or they're going all the way to negative infinity on the left. But, the, but it will be approaching this Y value, okay? So here are some examples of some asymptotes just to give you some, some images, okay? So this graph here is the graph of two X plus one over X plus one. And if you notice, it has this vertical asymptote here at X equals negative one. 
And then it has this horizontal asymptote here at y equal to two, okay? Now for right now, we're just recognizing it given the graph, okay? Eventually, you will have to be able to find it without being given a graph, okay? And there will be some rules on how to do that. But for right now, they're giving us the images and we're just identifying. Notice that this one does not have any uh, vertical asymptote, okay? There's no line, no vertical line that I can't touch. This thing just goes on forever, okay? Forever in that direction and forever in this direction. However, there is a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis, which is when the y value is equal to zero, right? The y value here is zero. So it will go really, really close to this line, but it will never touch it on this end. And it will get really, really close to this line on this side, but it will never touch it on this end, okay? Similarly, for the last graph, it's two over x minus one all squared. Again, we have this vertical asymptote here at x equals positive one, and we also have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to zero. Now, this images, these are called hyperbolas, okay? So it's when you don't cross a certain vertical uh, asymptote and you don't cross a certain horizontal asymptote. The only way that that image can go is if it goes like this, or if it's on the other side, it goes like that, or if it's at the bottom, it goes like this, or at the bottom on the other side, it goes like that, okay? Those are called hyperbolas. And we really don't know which way the hyperbolas are going to be until we get more information about that function, okay? For the case of one over X, um, the hyperbolas are just like this, okay? Whereas in the case of this one, um, notice that it also had those hyperbolas. See, it had them here and here. Now, when they both go in the same direction, they're not typically called hyperbolas. They have to be diagonal from each other to be called hyperbolas, okay? Um, and so the same thing here, even one over X had them opposite from each other. So they were called hyperbolas. That's not really something super important, but it is mentioned in the text. So we went ahead and mentioned it here, okay? Now, here's some other information that we need to know. So remember, this is a polynomial. They just wrote it expanded. This is a polynomial and they wrote that expanded. Now, before you even start talking about vertical asymptotes or horizontal asymptotes, you have to make sure that this fraction is reduced. It must be reduced first. And that's what they're trying to say here where they say nx and dx have no common factors. That means you would have factored everybody. And then if you could, you would have canceled some factors. And then now you just have the reduced um, fraction, okay? And you only look at the reduced fraction whenever you start trying to find your asymptotes, okay? Um, and so this has, uh, it says the function will have vertical asymptotes when the denominator equals zero and it will have one or no horizontal asymptotes. And the way you figure that out is by comparing the degrees, the highest exponent in the numerator and the highest exponent of X in the denominator, okay? When you make those comparisons, um, there's only three different things that can happen. Either the top degree is bigger, the top degree is smaller, or the top degree and the bottom degree are the same, okay? Those are the only three possibilities of the cases that you can have. And so we need to talk about, well, what happens in those three different cases, okay? In the case where the, the, uh, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, okay? So that highest exponent in the numerator is smaller than the highest exponent in the denominator. When that happens, you automatically have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, which is the x-axis, okay? So when the top degree is smaller or the top exponent is smaller, it will automatically be at the x-axis, which is y equals zero. When the degrees are the same, okay, 
Um, then you would have to take the leading coefficient of the numerator and divide it by the leading coefficient of the denominator. And that will tell you where your horizontal asymptote is located. And in the case where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then you would not have any horizontal asymptotes, okay? You may have a different kind of asymptote, but we have not talked about that one just yet, okay? So here's some examples. It says, find all vertical and horizontal asymptotes of the graph of each rational function. So for the first case, we have 2x over 3x squared plus 1. It says, for this rational function, the degree of the denominator, what is the degree of the numerator? The highest exponent of x here is 1. And what's the degree of the denominator? The highest exponent of x in the denominator is actually 2. And 1 is less than 2, OK? And so that's why they're saying that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And in that case, when it's less than, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, automatically at y equals 0. Um, so that's for the horizontal asymptote. Just by looking at it, you can determine what the horizontal asymptote is. To find any vertical asymptotes, you're going to set your denominator equal to zero and solve the resulting equation. So in this case, um, you would take three x squared plus one equal to zero, which would cause you to minus one on both sides, giving you three x squared equal to negative one and then dividing by three on both sides, which gives you x squared equals to negative one third. But we already know that when I go to do the next step, which is to take the square root, you can't take the square root of a negative. This would come out as an imaginary, which means it's not real, okay? So this is why it says it has no real solutions, which means it has no vertical asymptote, okay? Most times you can find X values, and so you will find those vertical asymptotes, but in this case, it's a special one and you don't have a vertical asymptote. Now they did graph it for me just so that you could verify the um, horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Now the horizontal asymptote is on the X axis, which is Y equal to zero. Um, and notice that even though it touches the horizontal asymptote, the ends will get really, really close and never touch this x-axis, okay? So it kind of curves like this is essentially what happens. Um, and so that's why it's still considered a horizontal asymptote. Whereas vertical asymptotes are different. You never cross a vertical asymptote ever, okay? So Let's look at B. Now B, what was the function there? So for B, the function was f of x equals 2x squared over x squared minus one. So in this case, if we look at the degree of the numerator, the highest exponent of the numerator is two. And if we look at the degree of the denominator, the highest exponent is also two. So in this case, the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. So in that case, you have to take your equation. It has to be y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator and then over the leading coefficient of the denominator, okay? And so this x squared was where we got the degree from. So I'm gonna look at its coefficient and it's a two. And then the coefficient of this x squared is an invisible one. And what is two divided by one? It's just two. So notice that y equal to two is the horizontal asymptote, okay? Now, for the vertical asymptotes, we have to take our denominator equal to zero. And in this case, the denominator was x squared minus one. So when we take that denominator equal to zero, we have to factor it. We set each factor equal to zero, and we end up with x equal to negative one and x equal to positive one. 
So those are going to be our two vertical asymptotes. So we have two vertical asymptotes. So that means at negative one, I have this imagined invisible line that I can't cross. At positive one, I have this invisible line that I can't cross, vertical line. And then at y equal to two, I have this horizontal um, asymptote. Now I don't know whether I'm gonna touch it or not. All I know is that it'll trail off toward that at the ends, okay? Now I don't even know whether the graph looks like this up here or if it's down here trailing off, um, but they have graphed it for us just to verify it, okay? But we have not learned how to graph them just yet. Right now, all we're doing is trying to find those vertical and horizontal asymptotes. They're just confirming your results with an image, okay? But we do not know how to graph this just yet. We will learn how to tell whether the graph is up here or down here, how to tell if the graph is up here or down here, how to tell if there's a loopy down here, a loopy up here, or one of those like cubed functions, like a little wiggle, or going in the other direction, a little wiggle. Um, because you can cross a horizontal asymptote in the middle. So it is very much possible. And then even though this thing does loop down there, how do I know it doesn't go up higher, right? All of that is important information that we will learn how to do. But right now we're just concentrating on finding those asymptotes, okay? Eventually we'll worry about all the other bits of information and then putting it all together, okay? Um, but for now, it does have an example. So just like linear equations or functions and quadratics, there's always real world applications. Um, so this one says that a utility company burns coal to generate electricity. The cost C in dollars of removing P percent of the smokestack pollutants is given by this uh, function here. And it tells me that my percentage is going to be, of course, between zero and 100 percent. Um, it says, you are a member of a state legislature considering a law that would require utility companies to remove 90% of the pollutants from their smokestack emissions. The current law requires 85% removal. How much additional cost would the utility company incur as a result of the new law? So basically, you just need to figure out what was the cost for 85%, what will be the cost for 90%, and if you want to know what the additional cost was, then subtract the value from the change, the 90%, to the original 85%. So again, of course, they always like to draw everything to help you with the visual representation. Um, and it, they did give me this graph, okay? Um, if they don't give you the graph, then you may need to do some computations. And even with the graph, it looks like you cannot pinpoint exactly what that Y value is, and you cannot pinpoint exactly what this Y value is, okay? So we will need to do the algebra to know exactly what those Y values are, so I can take that difference, right? To see how much was additionally required for cost. So the first thing is, is to go figure out what the cost was for 85%, right? That's what they're doing right now is the 85% removal. And so we're gonna see what was the cost for 85% removal. So they took the cost function and they plugged in 85 for P because P was a percentage. And they did the computations and they ended up with this cost. Now, in order to compare that with the new cost, we have to find the new cost, right? So now we're gonna plug in 90 for P and create that same computation and this time I ended up with 72, that, or 720,000. So now I just need to find the difference between those two costs, the new cost and the old cost. So in order for me to do that, they're literally just subtracting the new law uh, cost minus the old law cost. And this is the amount that they get, okay? So this is the additional amount that it will cost the company to go from 85% removal to 90% removal. And now we get into our practice problems. And so we're gonna go ahead and work with this. Now, this first one is very tricky because um, if I wanna talk about the horizontal asymptote, I have to talk about the degree of the numerator. Now notice that there are no X's in my numerator, which means that my degree is zero. 
Because what does degree mean? Degree means the highest exponent of your variable, your highest exponent of x. And in this case, there is no x. So the highest exponent would be zero for the numerator. Now for the denominator, um, we don't know what it is exactly, but I know for a fact that if I multiply these three things out, x minus eight, x minus eight, x minus eight, after I'm done multiplying, I am gonna end up with x cubed plus or minus something, something, something. Okay, I don't know what it is exactly, and it's not important. All I need to know is what the highest exponent is going to be. So when you take x times x, you're going to get x squared. And then when you take that long result times this guy, that x times that x squared is going to give you x cubed. Okay, so basically, if you have x to the one power cubed, it's x cubed power. Okay, and so then the degree down there is just three. Okay, so in this case, the degree of my numerator is less than the degree of my denominator because zero is less than three. So what does that mean? This means um, there is a horizontal asymptote at automatically y equal to zero, okay? Anytime the top degree is smaller than the bottom, it's automatically at y equal to zero, okay? So that's the horizontal asymptote. For the vertical asymptote, you take your denominator and you equal it to zero, kind of like we do when we're finding domain, okay? Because we know that all that weird asymptote business happens at those numbers that are taken from the domain, okay? So let's go figure out what that is. If I take the cube root on both sides, you do not get plus or minus when you do odd roots. So I just get x minus eight all by itself and the cube root of zero is zero. Then I would add eight. And so I get x equals to eight. So this means I'm gonna have a vertical asymptote at x equals to eight, okay? And if the computer asks you to draw them, then just make sure that when you go to your graph that you put a dotted line at y equals zero. This is where y equals zero. So this is where your asymptote should be, is on that x axis, okay? And then, for the vertical asymptote, um, that has to happen when x is equal to eight. So when x is equal to eight, I have this vertical um, line there. And so when you draw it in the, in the weather sign, just make sure that you draw the line first. So you could pick a point over here and a point over there and then click on the line button. I think you actually have to click the line button first, then pick two points that are on the x-axis and it'll draw the line. Then you have to make sure that you make the line a dashed line, right? Because it's not part of the graph, it's just the asymptote. And so it has to be a dashed line. Same thing for this, you're gonna plug in, pick a point, you could pick eight on the x-axis, but then pick another number on this line. So either some positive y value where x is eight or some negative y value where x is eight. But once you have two points on the line, um, it should draw the line for you. And then you just have to make sure you make it dashed, okay? That's just in case it makes you graph them. Sometimes it doesn't, it just asks you to type them in and that's it, okay? Also, what's important to remember is that vertical lines are always X equals a number and horizontal lines are always Y equals a number. If you forget that, you'll be getting them all wrong, okay? So for number two, it says find all the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So let's look at the degree of the numerator. In this case, the highest exponent of X is one. And for the degree of the denominator, the highest exponent of X is also one. So in this case, they are the same because one equals one, right? So then that means that my horizontal asymptote is gonna be at y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. This is the guy that had the one um, degree, so its coefficient is actually a negative seven. This is the term that had the one degree and its coefficient is a positive five. So where's my horizontal asymptote? My horizontal asymptote is that y equals negative seven fifths. And if I had to draw that, I think that's negative 1.4. And so on the number line or on the graph, 
I would have down here at negative 1.4 my dashed line. Okay. Now let's go talk about the vertical asymptotes. Remember that happens when your denominator is equal to zero. So for horizontal asymptotes, you're looking at the degrees. For vertical asymptotes, you're looking at the denominator. So take your denominator equal to zero. I'm gonna minus two. I'm gonna divide by five. And so then I get this as my vertical asymptote. And for graphing purposes, that's about a negative, or it is 0 0.4. So that means a positive 0 0.4. And then I have a vertical dashed line there, okay? And so there's both of my vertical and my horizontal asymptotes. Okay, we have two more practice problems and then this section will be concluded. So for horizontal asymptotes, the degree of the numerator, the only term that has X is this one and its exponent is a two. The degree of the denominator, there are two terms with x in the denominator, but which one has the higher exponent? This one does. So the higher exponent is the degree of the denominator. And so then in this case, they're actually equivalent again, aren't they? Because two equals two. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. You only take this ratio when they are equivalent in degrees. If the top degree is smaller, then it's automatically at zero. You don't need to do a ratio, okay? So for here, this was the term that had the degree two and its coefficient is negative eight. And then this is the term that had the degree two and its coefficient is an invisible one. And so then I get a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative eight. Now for the vertical asymptote, you take your denominator and you equal it to zero, okay? Now I cannot factor this. There's no factors of seven that will give me one. So I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. Negative B plus or minus B squared minus four A C all over two A. So I get negative one plus or minus one minus 28 is negative 27. This is gonna come out as an I. And we already know that it's imaginary, which means I cannot graph it. So this tells me I have no vertical asymptotes at all, okay? Because I got an I. Now let's look at this one. So we've got this function here. If I look at the degree here, the degree of the numerator is actually equal to one. And the degree of the denominator is equal to one. So the two are equivalent, okay? Which means the horizontal asymptote will be at y equals um, this coefficient, which is actually this negative applies to either one, but you do have to apply it to one of them, okay? I am going to go ahead and apply it to my numerator so that when I do this, it will be negative three X and positive one, which doesn't really change the degrees or anything, but notice that the coefficient of the numerator is not positive because I put this up there, okay? So it's actually negative three. And then the, the coefficient down here is a positive one, which gives me negative three. Now, what if I had chosen to put the negative downstairs? Well, then that three would have stayed positive and this, one coefficient would have turned negative. And what's positive three over negative one? It's still negative three, okay? So you just have to make a decision on where to put that negative. Are you going to choose to put it in the numerator or are you gonna to choose to put it in the denominator? But you do have to do something with it to figure out this horizontal asymptote, okay? Now the easy part is the denominator equal to zero. We get X minus three equal to zero. 
Since I chose to give that negative to the numerator, I'm only doing this in the denominator, okay? So I'm gonna go with this. Um, and then I just add three over and I get three. Now, the question I get most times is, what if I did choose to put the negative at the bottom, okay? Is it gonna change my answers? No, it's not. Because then I get this, I get negative X and positive three. And so notice the degrees are the same. If I put positive three over negative one, I get the same horizontal asymptote. And if I take this denominator and equal it to zero, I get negative X equals negative three. And when I divide by negative one, I get the positive three again, the same vertical asymptote I got over here, okay? So keep in mind that, um, you have to choose whether to put that negative at the top or at the bottom. The only mistake you'll make is don't put it in both the top and the bottom. If you put it in both the top and the bottom, that's a double negative, which means the fraction would have been positive to begin with. And it's not, it's a negative fraction. So you have to choose, are you going to make the top negative or are you gonna make the bottom negative? Either way, you'll get the same asymptotes. Okay, I personally always choose the top just because I've been taught that it's not formal to keep a negative in the bottom. Okay, so normally I always do it in this, this manner. But that is the end of the section. Um, so mostly just kind of defining what vertical and horizontal asymptotes are, trying to find them in a graph or trying to find them algebraically. Okay, and you've got plenty of different kinds of examples. So hopefully that is enough while you attempt the um, web assign assignment. If you do get stuck, just remind as a reminder, you can text me or email me or uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session to get any questions clarified, okay? But other than that, you guys, uh, good luck on this section.